So this is really uh, a puzzle. Why is it that uh, the Middle East and uh, the North African region uh, behave uh, in a way that's so different from the rest? Um, and there are a number of possibilities, a number of uh, reasons for that differentiation, but I think what is uh, particularly important to take into account are two elements. The first one is that in terms of uh, structural international dynamics, the uh, Middle East, North Africa region exhibits characteristics similar to those of the globe during the Cold War. There is a lot of uh, superpower interest. The United States is extremely committed uh, and present and interested in, in the area. In fact, two of the major civil wars are associated with direct U.S. interventions in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, we also uh, observe that other uh, major powers, such as Russia, for example, uh, are present in the area. We see a lot of influx of weapons, financial support for uh, states and rebels. So we see a lot of international involvement uh, both regional and much more global. So this is a characteristic of, of the Cold War, which has ended in most other places, uh, but has not in the Middle East for reasons that have to do with some peculiar elements of the region, uh, primarily uh, the presence of energy sources, but also uh, the continuing uh, Israel-Palestine conflict. The second element that makes um, the uh, region specific and accounts for this continuation of conflict uh, is the emergence of a revolutionary ideology. With the uh, decline of Marxism, uh, with the end of the Soviet Union, the main uh, revolutionary ideology uh, and form of transnational organization that dominated and motivated a lot of insurgencies across the world disappeared. And as, as a result of that, uh, a lot of uh, the uh, movements that were inspired by this project of uh, socialist transformation of society disappeared as well. They lost the raison d'etre. Uh, this is not the case with the wider um, Islamic world in which uh, a strong um, counter-hegemonic ideology developed, and this is the ideology of uh, jihadism or Salafism, the idea that uh, societies should be reformed uh, in an Islamic way um, and should uh, shun the West and its ways. Uh, and uh, this uh, ideology, uh, even though not by any means dominant in Muslim societies, attracted um, a large number of, of followers, uh, generated a lot of activity, uh, is at the source of a transnational movement, and that's why we see a lot of foreign fighters flocking to a lot of these local conflicts, and provided uh, uh, the link between those uh, transnational revolutionary movements and activists and ideas on the one hand, and the much more local and parochial concerns of a lot of uh, the individuals who joined the fighting at the local level who may be motivated by sectarian, ethnic or very local kinds of grievances. So the result of those two factors, the international uh, structural dynamics on the one hand and uh, the revolutionary um, element in the form of uh, uh, jihadi Islamism, uh, I think are the factors that explain why the region has become uh, so atypical and, uh, compared to the rest of the world, why wars in the rest of the world, uh, civil wars have been declining, they've, they've been booming uh, in the Middle East, and, and why we are likely to see a continuation of, of those uh, conflicts uh, for the time, for the, for the short uh, and um, near future at least. My uh, proposal, my call, is combining those general comparative features on the one hand the more area uh, connected and local features on the other hand, I think we'll be able to uh, understand uh, and eventually propose um, intervention ways that uh, may be better um, um, adapted to that reality.